Hello, we're the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. Today's episode we have a small bit of SpaceX related information but mostly Boca Chica and Starship with SM4 testing and SM5 build updates. Probably won't be too long of an episode today but without further ado let's head straight in and get up to date. SpaceX has, for a while, bought Tesla components for their needs. This new article from the CNBC reports that for the first time Tesla has reported a bulk sale of car parts to SpaceX. Apparently a new SEC filing says that SpaceX has bought a lot of components from Tesla including a purchase of $600,000 by the company in the first quarter of 2020. SpaceX has also recently released a blog post with some news about their efforts to reduce Starlink reflectivity. Whilst not much different to the small tweet we got from Elon Musk recently, it goes into a lot more depth. The article also has some very interesting information about how Starlink works in general, so a worthwhile read regardless. Now over to Boca Chica where SpaceX recently completed a successful cryogenic pressure test of the SM4 tank. We'll start with some new building developments such as the latest work on the Onion tent, which as you can see here is almost complete. They are still working on extending it at the back, but it doesn't appear as though it will get much, if any, longer than it already is. Also, the new building we've been seeing recently getting constructed has had further work to get it ready for operations, but I still can't discern what those might be. However, you can see here a truck with the logo of a company called Airgas on it, which could be an indication, but keep in mind that I'm simply making assumptions here. Elsewhere in the yard, such as in this clip, tanks from the same company are used. Airgas appears to provide welding equipment and support companies with welding operations, so whilst only a guess, maybe the new building is going to see some welding operations happening. With this new building, there has also been work spotted going on with what appears to be the addition of a door. It's an interesting looking door, but it might mean that we won't know for sure what the building is for until stuff starts rolling out of it. Over to the launch area where further work has been going on. There has been this new metal frame that has been spotted moving around, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. It was moved over to and placed on top of some pipes and wires that go into the launch mount to feed the rocket. Also, some work has been done on Starhopper yet again, with some pipes and electrical work happening as you can see here. There have also been some sort of metal frames attached to the top of the vehicle too. With engineers here working to hook up whatever it is that they are attaching to it, so it will be interesting to see how they utilise this water tower now. Moving on to SM4 which as you all know is the first full tank section to complete a successful cryo pressure test. Next up for this rocket will be a static fire but before that engineers need to remove some stuff from the launch mount to attach the engine. You can see here that engineers have removed the support legs and hydraulic rams from beneath the rocket. Then recently a Raptor was spotted moving down the road to the launch area so I wonder if SM4 will be moved or stay where it is for the static fire. Thank you to La Padre for letting me use this image. With engineers continuing to work inside the thrust section, it's not yet clear whether or not they've installed the Raptor. However, it definitely won't be long before it does get attached since SpaceX aren't waiting around. Here you can see we have some updated road and beach closures from Cameron County. With the primary date for the static fire being Friday May the 1st and back updates being over the weekend. Hopefully by next week we will have seen the first Starship prototype light its engine for the first time. I just can't wait. Finally, for the SM4 vehicle in the launch area, more arrivals have been captured with some nitrogen arriving as you can see here. However, there was also the arrival of some methane, so incredibly exciting times. We don't have too many updates on SM5, but let's take a look and see what's been happening. First up, let's take a little look at the not so shiny nose cone in the high bay, which as you can see here is gradually starting to match the rings. Engineers appear to be going Starhopper style on the nose cone with sheets of metal being attached to match the rings. Remember though, this may not even be used on the eventual SM5 vehicle anyway. Elsewhere, we have some SM5 thrust sections spotted in and around an onion tent. You can see here one part of that thrust section was sitting outside. The other part, which was last seen in the tent, appears to be almost ready. I'm not entirely sure which of the sections we've just seen is for the bulkhead and which section goes below, but more recent thrust section work has been going on. You can see here the bottom bulkhead which looks almost complete bar some wiring was moved outside. It was also recently mated with the ring section and as you can see here it turns out that ring number 149 is an SM5 and not SM6 ring. However I want to point out the weld on this ring, I know nothing about welding but that looks to me as quite an improvement over what we've seen previously. Could this be to do with the improved process we heard Musk talking about last episode? 
With the thrust section bulkhead and rings mated and another bottom ring stack being worked on, I don't think it will be too much longer before we begin to see these sections being stacked. As I said, not much on SM5, but it's really awesome to see this vehicle progress with the addition of a nose cone which may or may not stay. However, there is one final thing to show you for SM5 as usual, which is Raphael's latest build diagram. You can also see a header tank for the nose cone has also been spotted. As always, a massive thanks to Mary Boca Chica Girl for the incredible footage and to NASA Spaceflight for providing a platform to share it. We are all truly grateful. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX Show. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.